Hi everyone, it's Lisa from My Dreaming Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. Today's soap is my entry for the July 2020 Soap Challenge hosted by Amy Warden. For this month's challenge we need to make natural rock soaps. So we've got the choice of either making some natural marble or some river rocks. And I decided I wanted to make river rocks. Now, I don't actually have any of those, you know those silicone rock moulds that you can get? And to be honest, I'm actually not a fan of the way that they make the rock sort of very flat on one side. So I decided that I wanted to make my own silicone moulds so I could get a nice shaped rock all the way round. So I did a little bit of research and I found some perfect rocks between 60 and 130 millimetres. So I ordered a bag. And I must admit, I was hoping that I wasn't going to get too many of those 130 millimetre ones because <laughs> that would be a pretty chunky bar of soap, wouldn't it? Anyway, they arrived. one. Anyway, I did eventually find some more and got them delivered. So come on, let's go and make some soap. So for my stones, I decided I wanted to make some Yuhua stones, which are found in the Yangtze River. And I especially wanted to do the sort of greeny blue ones that we've got in the middle of the picture here. Now, as I explained in my introduction, I don't own any rock mould, so I'm going to make my own. And also, because I want to have a striped effect going through my rocks, I'm going to make these as vertical moulds so I can get the striping into those stones. So first of all, I'm just taking a few cleaned out bottles that are slightly bigger than the stones that I want to use, but not too hugely big. And then I'm just going to chop them so that they're slightly taller than my stones. Now, the stones that I've chosen, I've been through the revised bag of stones that I ordered and I just picked out three stones, because that's how many we needed for the challenge, that felt good in the hand and the ones that I thought would be nice to pick up and wash with. And then for each of these stones, I've just taken a little bit of plasticine and I've put it onto the very tip of the stone. I've chosen the area where I don't mind the stone being a little flatter. That I'm now just going to pop and squidge into the bottom of that bottle and that will keep the stone off of the base of the bottle. And where that plasticine has been put in, that will end up being the area that I'm going to pour through to create the stone. I've then just mixed up the silicone that I need. Now it's pretty straightforward to work out how much silicone that you need for each of these moulds because you can just take the mould with the stone stuck inside and fill it to the level that you want with some water. And then once you've got the volume, you'll just need to check the details of your silicone to look at what they call the density of the silicone and that will tell you if you need to increase or decrease your amount. So like, for example, I have to times my by 1.06 or something to get the right amount of silicone that I need. Now, I always really like this silicone that I've got. It's a platinum silicone. It gets very little bubbles and it pours really nicely. I will put a link to it in the description, but obviously bear in mind that will be a UK link. But if you're interested, at least it will give you an idea of the type of thing that you're looking for. And then once the silicone is poured in for all three of the moulds that I want, I just let it to set up. Mine sets up within an hour or so, but I think I just let mine overnight. Doesn't do any harm. Now with these rocks, the soap is actually going to be enclosed inside the mould rather than just having sort of like a normal open mould that you pour into and then unmould from. 
to help us get the silicone out, I've just squeezed a little bit of olive oil onto the silicone and I'm just using this knife to sort of let it wiggle down between the silicone and the plastic container and that will help us get this silicone out. We will actually need these bottles later so we can't just chop them off. Now to finally get that silicone out, I am going to make a little hole in the base of the bottle and then just use something to push that silicone out. I'm actually pushing against the stone. Now this is going to be absolutely fine because when we use this for a soap mould, we're going to cover up that hole with the silicone. So it doesn't matter. And in fact, it's good to have that little hole because that will help us unmould our soap later on as well. So once we've got our moulds out of our plastic containers, we're now just going to split the mould slightly. Now don't worry about this, this isn't going to cause your soap to leak out or anything. But remember the stone is encased in the middle of this mould, so we do need to split it a little bit to get the stone out and then later on to be able to get our soap out. So I'm just very carefully making a split down the side of the silicone literally just far enough to get that stone out. I don't want to go all the way to the bottom. I've deliberately made this cut quite jagged rather than straight and that's so when we put the mould back together it's got something to lock into to line everything up nicely rather than just trying to press two straight cuts against each other. And then once I'm far enough down to get the stone out, I know that will be comfortable for me to get the soap out when I've made it. Now I didn't have a colour the same as my inspiration stones, so I did spend a little bit of time a couple of days before just mucking around mixing up some blues and yellows and some black oxides to get the sort of colours that I want. And as you can see here are my little sample pots that I produced and I've written down what ratios of things I used to make each of those colours. I am also going to be using some titanium dioxide as well for the lighter bits of the soap. I'm using fresh ginger and green tea for my fragrance oil and it smells really lovely and I think it's obviously a very appropriate fragrance. I get this from NI Candles. So now let's get those moulds prepared. Remember, hopefully we've kept our bottles that we made the moulds in and I'm just going to rub some olive oil or any lightweight oil will do, just onto the outside of the mould so they come in and out of the bottles easily. And then I just use that little knife there to just to help slip them back into the bottles that they came out of. And we're putting them back into the bottles because remember, we split down the side of those moulds. So by placing them back into the original bottles that we cast them in, that will keep those silicone moulds held really tightly together and stop any leaks. Now I'm going to base my stones on the three main stones that you can see here. Um, well, there's two of the really dark ones, so I'm going to do one sort of almost solid colour with just a little bit of mottling in. I'm going to do one that's sort of got a big chunk of dark and then some stripes, and then I'm going to do one that's mainly stripy. Now apart from the one stone that is all sort of one colour throughout, this is essentially a layered pour for these soaps. So therefore I'm just going to go through and just show you and talk to you about some of the different ways I achieved some of the different looks. I'm not going to go and labour through every single individual layer of every single stone. So I'm starting off by making up an amount of batter that's going to do for that one stone that I want as a mainly solid colour and the big chunk of the greeny blue dark colour on the second stone. So I've weighed out the oil and lye that I need and I'm now just bringing it up to emulsion. Then I'll just add in my fragrance oil. 
And then I'm just going to split this out into the bulk of it for that dark green. But I do also want to have a little hint of a lighter colour and also some black as well. Now it is a little bit tricky to see how much batter you've put into these moulds so therefore for the stone where I'm having the bigger stripe of the green I have actually worked out how much batter I want to use and that's why I'm putting it back on the scale so I can just pour in the right amount and not fill that stone up too much or not enough. And then I'm going to do a series of teeny little in the pot swirls for that stone that's going to just be mainly green all the way through. So I'm just going to add to the top of my tealy green colour a little stripe of black and a little stripe of the very light colour. And then I'll just tip that into my mould and then just keep topping that up as I run out of those lighter colours. And then for that first stone, that's it finished, so it can now just be put away to saponify. Next I'm just going to do a very simple light coloured stripe. I don't want it to be white, I do want it to have a hint of that turquoisey colour in. So I'm just putting the tiniest drop of colouring in that I can to just lightly tint that soap batter. And then I'm just going to pour a very thin layer into each of the soaps. I've then just carried on doing a variety of individual colour pours or little in the pot swirls and all those sort of things. And each time obviously making sure I pour different quantities into each of the stones. And some of my layers actually got really quite small. I was sort of using about sort of 10, 15 grams of soap and making these teeny weeny little bits of soap with teeny weeny little bits of lye just to get those very thin layers that I wanted. Now the last layer I'm going to talk about in this video is to try and achieve that sort of speckly grey black layer that the stones have got. Now I'm going to hopefully achieve this by taking some activated charcoal and just sort of badly mixing it into our soap batter. You know the sort of thing that you try and normally avoid when you don't want any of those little black speckles in your soap? Well, I'm actually trying to get them this time, so this is how I'm going to do that. So I just carried on doing a variety of different thicknesses of layers and different types until I'd filled up the stones. And then I just covered them and left them overnight, ready to unmould the next day. So here they are the next day, and hopefully they should come out of these pots nice and easily, because remember we put some oil between the silicone and the actual plastic containers, and we've got some holes right on the bases so we can give them a little bit of a push and make those silicones come out. And then because we put some slits in the mould sort of a little bit of the way down and we know we've already got the actual stones out of these moulds we should be able to pop our soaps out fairly easily. You would want to be fairly happy at this stage that your soap isn't still soft. Mine has firmed up nicely overnight because obviously it is a little bit of tugging a little bit of pulling to get these out so you don't want to damage them in any way.
and then I'm just going to take a vegetable peeler and just go round and even off that bit that was right at the top you know where we poured the soap in just to smooth out that last bit of the stone <laughs> I then just left the stones for about four or five days I think it was and now I'm just going to polish them up and I'm just doing this by kind of just using the stones and washing with them so I'm just literally running them in some water and giving them a little wash over and then just gently popping them onto a tray just to drain off. Now I would have normally just done this under some running water in the sink I'm just using this bowl here just so I can do it on film. And now that they're all done, I'll leave you with a final picture of my rock soaps. I hope you like the soap and that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, it would be great if you gave me a thumbs up. And why not consider subscribing to my channel? Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!